everybody and welcome to MNJ Games. Now what I'm doing today is I'm going to show you a part that I'm working on right now that's different from my Let's Play series. Now there's going to be some things that look similar because I started this part before I started the Let's Play series and so I wanted to take some of the same aspects because I really liked how it was going. Um, but this is called Canyon Valley Amusement Park. And I named it that before I started adding in all the water and stuff. And the reason why I like adding a lot of water on my parks is because it kind of makes up for some blank space. Um, and so you see, I've used a lot of the meter right now. Don't really have a ton in my park, but that's because I've just got so much detail. Um, and so I'll kind of tell you what my plan is because I know how to use an exploit. Um, hopefully some of you guys have seen the video. Um, so my hope is that I could have this part done right here before I reach that 100% and then I could use the last 20% or so to kind of create in here. Now, so let's get started. First off, um, here's the spawn point right here. Um, and I didn't really cover it up like I'm doing in my Let's Play series, so that aspect I like more. Here's the parking lot and it really is not um, a logical parking lot to be honest. Um, but it's my first time attempting to create a parking lot. And so now I've got a sign saying, welcome to the park, which I found out in the workshop. I forgot who made it. Um, but so the idea is you come in here, you can turn to park in there, or you can go all the way over to this side. So obviously having this much of a parking lot um, takes up a lot of the percent. Like for example, let me highlight all this real quick. So highlight all that, all those. Um, let's do all this right here. So highlighting all this area, this entire parking lot, um, and I think it takes a little bit of that, yeah. So that took up 9%. So that actually, I mean, that's a lot, but it's not anything super duper, like, insane. Um, and so you kind of see what all that entailed. That entailed all the sidewalks and everything. And I wish, if we didn't have the meter, I would love to kind of have a path walking this way. It would be cool to see players actually walk by the rides. And I wanted to have a really big ride kind of by the parking lot area so that as guests come in, they can see. So like, look at that massive loop. So um, I wanted to have the largest loop in the world on this ride, and it's actually <laughs> the largest loop in the world by a large margin, uh, which I didn't really mean to make it that crazy, but we'll get to that ride in a little bit. Um, and then so right here, this would be like a staff entrance for employee parking and stuff. And I've still got to add a couple things. Let's say you come along here and I'm going to have like a little warehouse right here. Nothing crazy, but all this stuff back here, all these pieces right now, these are a lot of the pieces that I want to use as like backstage stuff. And so I've just got them sitting right here right now. So I don't have to necessarily go look them up. Um, for some reason, trying to save pieces isn't quite working. I like using this for like air conditioning vents or that smaller one. Um, you know, I showed you guys, or hopefully you guys have seen this trick before, um, which I either just put the handle on there, and then sometimes I also put in this, put it in sideways like that. So, um, yeah, you got some backstage here. We got some cars, some parking. Um, so if we go to this side, which I haven't really done as much back here, like with parking and stuff, uh, but this is supposed to be a staff building, like an office building. Um, I realized once I was making it, it's kind of a little bit like the building in the office <laughs> in terms of color scheme and stuff. Um, but I really like how it turned out. I just got to put some more detail around it and stuff. Um, you know, it's where you'd have all your, your accounting employees and just anybody who works on development and different stuff. Um, and so now as we come to the park, this looks very, this is going to be very familiar or similar to what I'm doing right now. Um, I don't really have anything here in the middle and once again if let's take this right here if you remove that I don't have the entire place actually as a path and same thing right here um, because paths take up so much of the meter um, what I would recommend though because what I didn't do on this one is before I started laying those pieces I would place like whether it's trash bins or um, or chairs I mean, sorry, or uh, benches to see kind of where your paths are, just so you have an idea, because you obviously need to have benches and stuff. Um, and so, 
this, you know, inside you've got some employees working, um, and we've got the plane of coaster signs there. Um, and then here, this is, this part's the exact same as the park I'm working on right now. Um, this building, I don't really like this building because it just doesn't really fit as well with the other ones that I have here. Um, I'm just going to keep it for right now because I think this is one of the first ones. And I made this kind of like a long office building as well um, where there's, you know, all the ticketing staff and stuff like that. So you come into the park. And then we've got this big open area. And I love kind of what I was able to do with all this over here. Um, so I made a couple of different building styles, but I tried to keep it all roughly the same color and same look. And so this is similar, you know, you got staff um, uh, place, we got restrooms. So I like that little area, I think that's nice. Um, you've got this little wall that then if you look back here, this is where um, this goes back to kind of the backstage. Um, and so here, I've still got stuff to do inside. Like I still have to place lights and stuff, but guest services. And then we got some stalls and some food places up there. So in here, this is one thing I did, which I kind of like is because most every place you go, you've got some kind of queue lines, right? Um, and so I just colored it kind of to just have it color code with the color of the, whether it's a restaurant or um, anything like that. And so that's place in here. I'll probably put down some benches or something here. Uh, but I need to put lights, and then if you go back here, you've got some staff um, staff buildings. Yeah, those are all staff buildings. Um, and so I like what I did here on the outside with trying to trying to vary different stuff. You know, you've got a couple different pieces, and up here is kind of so let me. Yeah, so this is actually just kind of a look to be a much larger building than it is. Um, as you see, I haven't really done anything with this this uh, ride yet, because I'll come back to it. Um, now over here, this is probably my favorite part, um, this kind of stretch on the left side. So fast passes, yeah, I've got a first aid office, we've got some um, an area for people to get their fast passes. These lockers are created by... Um, Sorry, these lockers are created by Ted07386. Um, so what I probably should have done, now that I look at it, I probably should have moved them down a little bit more. Um, but he does a really good job with a lot of the stuff he creates. And then here, I saw this um, Geekism, I think, did this on one of his parks a couple years ago, where he kind of created a little stroller, a place where you can rent strollers. And so I really like how that turned out. It's just simple art pieces. Um... And then here I just embedded the, uh, um, I just, em oh, yeah, I just embedded the sign. Um, and then here, you know, this is where you drop off your strollers. This is where you can pick them up. And then this is the little backstage to get backstage for employees and stuff. And now this next building is going to look similar to one that I'm doing right now, except I feel like the one that I'm doing that we're doing now that we um, this could be on episode three and four is a lot more detailed than this because this you've got part of it's kind of like a sunroof type, right? Um, and so this is just a big area for food. I put some some benches out and I color coded the the queue lines um, with the main color of the restaurant. So I think that looks nice. I just got to put in lights. And so as we come out here, um, sometimes it just really annoys me how I wish you could, because I got to obviously fix part of this. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do here, because obviously this is not actual path. That's a piece of tile. Um, so I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that section. But I wish you could only like say, oh, well, I only want to put, um, put a, a railing and curb on this part of the line. So yeah, it looks good. So now when we come over here, let me get out of that. So now, and let me just show you actually at nighttime if, if I've lit this up at all yet. I can't really remember if I've done too much with it. Haven't done a lot with it. Um, you know, you've got the signs, which I need to put some words on that. But that's one thing I like about these signs that are lit up that you can kind of place inside the walls is that, um, which, ooh, that's a little bit too light. Um, it's all good, yeah. And I place those little air conditioning vents on the ceiling. 
yeah, so I think overall, I mean, there's a lot more lighting that I need to do, but I think it's a good start. Um, and as you see the parking lot at night, and you see kind of the other rides lit up a little bit. Um, yeah, I think, I, always, I don't know why I always like to do 12 o'clock. I feel like it's where the sun is at a perfect place to where you don't really have shadows in too many areas. All right, so if we go this way, so this is what I'm kind of working on um, right now because... I was just, I was struggling to figure out what do, I, what do I want to do in here with this patch of grass? And I said, well, why don't I make it into this whole large like river kind of thing? Well, now I'm trying to figure out, okay, I kind of want to have a walkway. And so as you see here with this blue ride, I haven't named it yet. If anybody thinks of a great name for the ride, that's probably where I'm worst at in this game is actually naming rides. And so you see, there's a lot of uh, little things that needs to be done, but I like the idea of having kind of this little little pier area right here and you see this um, kind of a zero G roll right here so I think that's really cool kind of how this has ended up um, and so now if we look at this ride so we'll look at the details afterwards but let's get on the queue and so I like how you know it's using individual pieces but I'm not trying to create this massive park like I did with Trinity Lake so I kind of wanted to be more detailed with stuff. And I need to support this bridge a little bit more. But now as you see, so I'm trying to use this camera more just because it's a little bit easier. So there's the, there's the station. Um, so as you see, I placed a hazard strip right there. And then we come in, um, and now this is one thing I've started doing that I really like, placing these hazard strips right by the ride. Um, so I think this looks good. It's a, you know, an open air entrance because I didn't put glass there because you can't really get glass and triangular pieces and stuff. Oh, sorry about that. So now this is a floorless coaster. So let's go ahead and ride the ride. And while we're looking at that, if we look at details, um, you know, what, let me change this back to to meters for a second because this just gets kind of awkward when you're looking at. You know, every once in a while, I'll change it to feet to try to get an idea of something, but you know, feet are just not as they don't um, convert as well. You know, for meters. So if you look here, um, if you look at the results, so it's 1,800 meters, which is pretty long ride for floorless, actually really long. Max speed 81. Biggest drop 57 meters, which I think was about 182 feet. Um, you know, so the G forces are pretty good. I think there's one area where it's a little bit higher. Six inversions, two airtime count, track scenery, and the reason why I kind of like having chains go slower is, you know, obviously if you if trains went faster, the ratings would be higher. But if you go to a real theme park, you know, normally. Um, Normally the chains go pretty slow unless if you're on one of those cable lift hills. Oh, sorry about that guys. Hold on So let's ride front bumper view All right, see you guys after the ride so 
There's the ride. As I said, I haven't named it yet, so if you can think of a great name or a good name, please let me know. And as we see here, um, I've got this whole backstage area, and this really kind of took me a while to work on because I wanted to get it nice. Um, and this is, you know, a lot of, this is probably overdoing it in terms of the supports and everything and the walk areas, but I kind of like that, kind of having this large structure. Um, and one thing, um, if you look at this right here, the reason why I did that is, sorry, I'm trying to zoom out a little bit. So I have these hazard strips and then because they're basically not very thick, I need to have some kind of um, flat surface here on the side. And so I basically took these other pieces and the other hazard strips and, and put them all the way along the side. And so I had to figure out some way to make it look realistic right here. So that's where, why I end up having the two layers with the um, things in between. And so I think it looks, I think it looks good. Um, Oh, I just realized that's not quite perfect. Oh, well. Um, nobody would have noticed that if I didn't. <laughs> Maybe it's in like that. Yeah. So um, that's kind of the maintenance area there. And then this is the transfer track area. And I love kind of how this turned out. You know, now that we've got the chain link fence. I put the chain link fence kind of here as protection for employees who are trying to walk up here. Um, you know, I've got the iron... Uh, girder and then the locomotive on top um, and then it would map up or match up here which I probably should have extended this out just a little bit um, so I can always do that and then so up here I just kind of put I've got another, uh, another set of stairs to get there I've got a couple ropes if needed I've got some of the sci-fi equipment that at least can give it some look of realism um, you know I've got these new what are those electric cables and then I've got a area where I've got cables running from this to the computer and then there's stairs to get downstairs and I should probably run put this in a place where I can run cables up from it but then I just try to put some stuff down here um, some boxes different stuff um, so yeah I really like how that parts turned out and so let's see this at night So this part's lit up well. Um, I just have the hanging lights. Or no, I put box lights there. Sorry, box lights. And then, you know, under here there's not really much lighting because the lighting from above comes through. Um, and I still need to put some, some little area lights or something kind of on the other part of this backstage area. But I got these all lit up with the studio lights. So I think that looks nice. And then I put lights kind of going up the lift hill, which I always think looks really good. And then in here, I just kind of put some of those area lights. Um, and then same thing here. It's not it's not super lit up, but that's fine. It doesn't have to be really lit up a lot. I mean, there's a lot of coasters that are fairly dark inside the station. Not super dark, or, but it's um, trying to give like that little intimidating vibe almost. And then here see so now here I just have these hanging lights so I think it's worked out well so far I mean obviously there's a lot of things to do so that's this section um, and then I just kind of put in a little um, vending machine area so now if we come over here we now come to this dive coaster I always want to say drop coaster for some reason I haven't named this one yet either once again I'm terrible with names um, but so as you can see, it's got a really big cobra roll and a really big drop that goes underground and then comes up out of ground. Um, and then, so as we see the hill right there, and I made this kind of area and I wanted to use the same kind of brick style or same kind of building style as over there, but kind of color it differently. And so this area, since everything else was red and black, I kind of made it red and black. And on the inside, I saw Vincinati did this on one of his things. He kind of had these um, up here for kind of, it's almost like decoration in a sense and also supports. And so I thought that looked really cool. So we've got some food places in here. And I'm going to put menu signs above it and stuff and put lights. And then here, a couple um, toilets. Now, 
what I did for the flooring is I just took the haunted house interior wood piece. Um, so I think it looks really cool being placed down like that. Um, I can't remember if it's the same on both sides. Yeah, it is. And so I just placed that down. Um, so I think that looks really cool. And then here we have a couple flat rides, which I need to put more flat rides in this park. Um, then another, this is the area where the coaster goes underground the first time. And I'm still working on kind of the backstage area, making it detailed. But I love what I did with this station. Um, I think it's unique. It's different. And so as you can kind of see here, looks really good. Um, and so I'll ride this coaster in a second. But I want to show you what I did with the backstage. So instead of having a transfer track, which I will put something here, um, I've got the, the track is actually connected, so I've got it connected to where you can then just use the um, tires in a sense and push them backwards in that way. But then I've got this other track here because it's going to have, it has another coaster. And so what I did is I tried to mask it to where you can't really tell, but I just built a whole nother station. And so as you can kind of see, I've got that kind of hidden off. So then you can actually see the coaster. And so you don't see the attendant or anything. And so it looks like if you kind of were to go in here, um, which I need to put a little door here and so forth, um, and probably extend this walkway. Yeah, that's probably what I need to do. It's just extend this walkway out. Oops, sorry. But trying to make it as realistic as possible because sometimes with transfer tracks, you do see other coasters in the the maintenance area um and so i'm still working on this you know it's still it's not perfect right here i kind of put a cage around it just so when um guests walk by they can't throw anything or do anything to the employees um yeah it's another little walkway up there and then here you know would just be the part where you can store another one so i've got to deck out the inside of it um and let's see what this looks like at night I actually want to ride this coaster at night. So let's see. So I think I looks pretty good with the uh, with the coloring of stuff. So well, let's pause the ride so we can jump on that train. So yeah, so as you see, I need to put lights on this coaster, but I'll definitely do that. So now this one's actually got a 200 foot drop if you include going underground. I think it's 210 feet, 212 feet. So it's right around the size of, um, of Valraven. And the reason why this is waiting here is since it's on test run, there's no people on the ride yet. Um, it has to wait for the car to get back to the station, I think, so... Yeah, hopefully that'll change once the trains are waiting for people to get in the car. Alright, so enjoy the ride. Alright, so let's go back to, actually, you know what, we'll see how this station's lit up. There are a couple of areas that can smooth out on the coaster a little bit more. Um, but I just kind of extended this out with um, these hazard strips and stuff, and I tried to make a little walkway so that, like, the employees can walk down this way. Um, and you've got the railing so nobody falls off. This is a perfect size to where it's not going to hit people's feet. Um... Yeah, I think this is one of my favorite stations that I've made so far. And so basically what I did was I just took art pieces. And as I saw somebody did this on one of Channel 5 Gaming's um, park tours, something similar to this, but the entire thing was angled. And I didn't want it to be too high. And I realized when I started angling it that obviously this would cut down into the station. So I said, well, why don't I just make this part flat? 
And then, so I just taken these um, co uh, square, or I guess not square, rectangular coaster supports and made that kind of the support of the um, station. And then I'm also having them be the supports of the, the pathing on the outside portion of it. So, really like how that's turned out. Um, and so if we kind of change to... It's always like looking to right at sunset. You can kind of get some really good views of stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think overall it's looking nice. What do you guys think? Are there any suggestions you have for any areas or what other coaster do you think would look good? So if I put another coaster um, or another section in this area, what type of coaster would fit there? Um, I'll be honest, since I don't, since I'm kind of run out of space, I might not put like a kids area in this. This might be more like a Cedar Point adult type, you know, more geared towards thrill rides, obviously, with the size of the coasters. Um, but make sure and let me know what you guys think. Um, I love your feedback. And as I said, there's still far from being done. Um, and so, as always, if you enjoy this video, make sure and hit that like button. And if you want to subscribe to the channel to be able to see more content, um, I appreciate that. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.